Hello everyone and welcome back to Criminology Clips. Today we're looking at Unit 2, AC 2.3, The Sociological Theories of Criminality. And we'll be focusing today on Marxist theories. Now, Marxism is based on the work of Karl Marx. And according to Marxists, they argue that society is divided into two classes. The bourgeoisie, the rich upper class, and the proletariat, the working class. Now, the bourgeoisie own the means of production, so that means they own the factories, the land, the companies and so on. Whereas the working class don't own the means of production, the only thing they have is their ability to work for a wage paid for by the bourgeoisie. And Marxists suggest that capitalist society, like the society we live in, works to maintain this inequality to keep the rich rich and the poor poor, and it can impact law as well. Now, Marxists suggest that capitalism is criminogenic, and that means it's crime-causing. And it's crime-causing in several ways. First of all, because the working class or, or proletariat are exploited, it drives many people into poverty. So the bourgeoisie will pay the proletariat, but they'll pay them a very minimal wage to make sure they can keep all the profit for themselves. And that means lots of people are living in pro poverty, and often, the only way to survive is to commit crime. So, for example, stealing that pack of ham from Aldi to feed your children. Another way that capitalism can cause crime is it continually pushes consumer goods at people through advertising. And the result of that is that people engage in utilitarian crimes like shoplifting in order to obtain these consumer goods that they can't afford. Status frustration can be felt by the proletariat as well because all of the inequality in their lower position in society makes them feel alienated and frustrated and that can result in them engaging in non-utilitarian crime like violence and vandalism. And finally, capitalism can cause crime among the capitalists themselves. So capitalist society is a dog-eat-dog -dog system and the idea is to get as much profit as you can and it promotes greed. So even those with the companies and the wealth are encouraged to engage in criminal behaviour to increase their wealth. And that's how Marxist theories can explain white collar and corporate crime. Marxists see lawmaking and law enforcement as serving the interests of the capitalist classes. So for example, Chambliss argues that laws are made to protect the private property of the rich. And an example is that there's lots of laws against homeless people squatting in empty houses but there are no laws to stop the rich from owning several houses. And there are very few laws that challenge the unequal distribution of wealth. So the laws are made to protect the bourgeoisie. And similarly, the laws are enforced selectively to benefit the bourgeoisie. So what often happens is the laws are enforced more on street crimes and working class crimes rather than on white collar and corporate crimes. Now the last point is that there's an ideological function and that is that Marxists argue that the ideas about crime and the law are a set of ideas or set of beliefs that conceal the inequality of capitalist society. So for example, the selective enforcement makes it look as if crime is a fault of the working class and as a result of that, that can divide the working class and it encourages the workers to blame working class criminals for their problems instead of blaming capitalism. It also shifts the attention away from more serious ruling class crimes. So the police end up focusing on working class crimes and not ruling class crimes. It shifts that focus. And some laws do benefit workers. So, for example, health and safety laws, they are there to benefit the working class. However, some people argue that they also benefit capitalism because it gives it a caring face. It suggests that the workers are being looked at after through these health and safety laws. However, how often they're applied and how often companies are prosecuted for not following them is negligible. So these ideas encourage the working class to accept capitalism instead of replacing it with a more equal society. So let's revise and reflect. Which two groups are in conflict according to Marxism? In what ways does capitalism cause crime? Give an example of how the law is enforced differently in relation to social class. And can you identify a criticism of Marxist explanations of crime? See you next time.